But this is Preacher Rich, and I'm going to share my heart in, in regards to being pro-life and what that means to me and what brought me to being pro-life. January the 23rd, 2022 is going to be Pro-Life Sunday. I'm recording this on the Saturday before, and thought I'd just share my heart, my passion, and, and why. And it all started back in the 70s. And it actually, I would call myself now, I would say I was pro-choice. I had no idea of the concept back at the time, but in the mid-70s, I would have been labeled as a pro-choice person. And then in 1979, I became pro-life. And so I'm going to kind of just share my story and my heart about uh, abortion and being pro-life. So what took place in my own life is I was very involved sexually with a girlfriend of mine. And uh, ultimately she got pregnant, and as soon as she got pregnant, the first words out of my mouth was, she needed to get an abortion. It was going to mess up my life. I uh, didn't need no kid in my life. We weren't married. I uh, didn't plan on having any kids. Didn't even know if ultimately I'd be with her. I was only with her at that time. I was only with her because she loved sex, and so we had uh, a lot of sex going on in our life. When she got pregnant, I uh, uh, told her she needed to get an abortion. And this is my position. My position was, I made it, and I can kill it. Yep, that was my heart. I don't even understand the concept of anybody that knows biology would think it's just a blob of cells or some tissue. I was an absolute atheist, did not believe in God whatsoever, but I knew this. It was an unborn child, no matter what um, stage of uh, it was in. And uh, I knew that if there was an abortion, we were killing that child, that baby. And uh, ultimately, she got that abortion. Uh, I defended that position many years with individuals. And then something took place. And, and what took place is I became pro-life. What, what brought me to being pro-life? It was simple. I accepted Jesus Christ in my life. And uh, as soon, I immediately, as soon as I accepted Christ in my life, the first thing that took place is I became pro-life. Uh, at that point, as soon as I accepted Christ, I could not, in my mind, comprehend how anybody that was a Christian would ever be able to support abortion. Now, I do understand why people support abortion. Uh, again, I can't understand a Christian, but somebody that doesn't know God, somebody that doesn't believe in God, it makes sense. I understand that people uh, would look at it and say, again, the argument inconvenient, uh, not the right time, uh, just not going to be best for me. I can understand the arguments when it comes to rape and incest. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, I do not understand how anybody could abort a child based upon it if they're not the sex that you want. That, that makes absolutely no sense to me. Even as an atheist, I would never uh, think that you would do that. I can understand what, uh, even somebody's argument if the, you know the child is going to be disabled. And so that's where you have an abortion. I understand the reasons behind it. I don't necessarily agree with them. And so, uh, and I'll explain why. But I became pro-life and then something took place in my life. And this was probably one of the most devastating times of my life. Is you have to remember, I had my own child aborted. I come to Christ and all of a sudden I realize uh, the, the evilness of it. I murdered my child. It wasn't just taking the child's life because it was inconvenient. It was murder. And, and that, I was convicted of that immediately. Well, my girlfriend at that time and I got married. And uh, we'd been married for a couple years. And then she got pregnant. And uh, I found out she was going to get an abortion. I didn't even know she was pregnant at the time, but I found out she's pregnant because I found a, a card from an abortion clinic for a scheduled appointment for an abortion. Now, we were getting ready to be divorced. Uh, she absolutely wanted to get divorced because she was divorcing me to go back to an old boyfriend. And uh, my wife was very uh, actively sexually while we were married, uh, and that's a whole other story. But when I found that card, I called the abortion clinic and I found out something. You, as the father of your child, have no say so if your child lives or die. Um, I tried to convince her to keep the child. She would not do it. She was going to still go through with the abortion. And honestly, it was devastating to me. And, uh, but my hands were tied. I remember that day was one of the most depressing days of my life. I uh, ended up being with a small group fellowship at some people's houses. And I asked them to pray for me. And uh, they prayed. I, and I found a peace that I never had about my abortion and I found peace about it and that there was the forgiveness of God and realized that uh, there was nothing I could do to stop the abortion but God knew my heart. Now I want to share something with you that I didn't realize this until years later because my mindset was I killed my child and now I didn't have a chance to save another child. 
But here's the truth of the matter is I realized years later that she was uh, messing around with anybody and everybody and that may not have been my child. Let me share something with you. It was immaterial. When I realized that years later, my position did not change whatsoever. Whether it was my child or not, that child deserved to live. And I would have raised that child uh, as my own son or daughter, regardless who had been the father. Because that child's life doesn't have less value because it was a different father than me. And the reality is that child deserved to live, regardless of how that child was conceived. And so let me take the position and share with you, I should say, let me share you my position when it comes to rape and incest. I understand that. I understand a position on that. And I am not going to judge somebody if they get an abortion because of those issues, because that's between them and God. But I will say, a child conceived in rape has just as much value and worth, whether it's conceived in rape or conceived in love. A child that's conceived in incest has just as much worth, whether it's conceived in incest or not. Now, I understand for a woman to, to go through that, or a young girl to go through that and carry that child, um, but I'm going to cover how that can be resolved and, and a little bit later on. And then I understand, again, with a disability, I can tell you at the time before I knew Christ, if I knew that that child born was going to have be a, a disabled, I would have had that child aborted because I felt like there was no way I could deal with raise a disabled child. Coming to Christ is a different story. Uh, and again, I'm going to share the concept if, you're, if you know Christ in your life. And even if the mother doesn't know Christ in her life, how that child's life can be saved. But first I want to tell you my pro-life story is I came to Christ and then I became pro-life immediately. But not just pro-life in words, but pro-life in action. And what I mean by pro-life in action is uh, I actively got involved in the pro-life movement. The first thing I did is I got involved in, in uh, uh, March for Life. And so uh, I end up uh, helping, uh, working with uh, other individuals, helping to start March of Life in Alaska where I live. So I was involved in March for Life. I was involved in Operation Rescue where we blocked abortion clinics. So we actually blocked the doors to the clinic so a woman couldn't come in and get an abortion. We had women walk by and tell us, I wish that you had been at this clinic when I had my abortion and had tears in her eyes. Uh, we was able to see some babies' lives saved. We actually see babies uh, come to term because of us being at uh, blocking those clinics. Uh, and you may agree or disagree with blocking the clinics. I understand that. Uh, I believe some other ways that you can do things. Uh, the other thing I was involved in is in prayer counseling. Is that what we would do is we'd be at the sidewalk and we'd give counsel and we pray for the women that were considering abortion. And told them even if they got the abortion we would support them. I was also involved in praying for pro-life candidates and pro-life laws. And then I feel that one of the most important things I did is to take all of my heart, all my passion, and I helped uh, to found a, a, a crisis pregnancy center where we could counsel women who were considering abortion, where we could help them if they decide to save their baby's life, that we'd help them with food and supplies and, and all the support we could. Uh, help them in adoption if they wanted to adopt out their baby. So I got involved in that. So not just words, but a lot of action. But let me share something with you. I believe the number one way to limit abortion is through the gospel. I believe there's many things that we can do to try to save babies' lives. It looks like the Supreme Court is going to rule against Roe versus Wade, so then it'll be up to the states to determine if they're going to support abortion or not, and there's several states that have laws in place that they will ban abortion, and I'm all for that. But let me tell you something, unless the heart is changed, it is going to be hard for a person to be able to look at issues like uh, a baby that's born out of uh, rape or incest, a baby that has a disability. And so let me share something with you. I believe the gospel is the answer. It's the answer to the, the whole abortion dilemma. First off, there'd be less unwanted pregnancies if somebody is saved, if they're born again and truly following Christ, guess what? They're not going to have sex outside of marriage. So they're not going to get pregnant if they're not married. If they are married, they will practice uh, a safe sex until they're ready to have a child. If a person is truly born again and following Christ, if they are pregnant, they're going to keep that baby. No matter how that baby is conceived, they're going to keep that baby. Why? Because they know that Christ can turn around and give them the strength and the power to be able to carry the baby through to love that child or to give that child up for adoption, if maybe that's the answer. Listen, 
there are more desires for, for unborn babies for adoption than any other kind of child. That uh, there is waiting list, a long, long waiting list for uh, uh, newborn babies. And even for babies that are, you know, are not even children. There are people who are pro-life all the way and do whatever they can to reach out to, to a child, to even a teenager. And so the argument that uh, the babies are unwanted, that's not true. Uh, sometimes the argument is, well, if the baby's going to be uh, disabled, that they should be aborted. Well, first off, let me say something. How many people do you know and how many famous people have some kind of disability and yet they've been successful in life? They have fruitfulness in their life. And then I want to come against a, a concept, a, a, a mindset that people have is, well, the argument is you, you shouldn't adopt a disabled person because they can become somebody famous. They could become a scientist. They become a, a, a president. They, they become a doctor, a lawyer, whatever. That's a good argument, but I don't agree even with that argument. Because what that's saying, well, what if that, that baby that's disabled is born and never become famous? Then their life saved wasn't worth it? I don't think that you believe that, do you? Or do you believe that if somebody disabled, they have less value, less worth than somebody who doesn't have a disability? I also would say, I think we're all disabled. I think we all have mental issues. I think we all have physical limitations. I think that we all fall short of the glory of God. I think we all could look at it that at times that we don't have the same value and worth as somebody else in the minds of this world. But in God's eyes, all have value and worth. So I absolutely believe that the answer to the, the, the abortion issue is the gospel of Jesus Christ. If somebody becomes born again, they're following Jesus Christ, they're not going to be doing certain things that would lead to an unwanted pregnancy. Somebody that's born again and following Christ is going to have the heart, the passion to save that child no matter how they're conceived. Now, my last thing I want to share with you, you say, well, what about the, the young girl that's 14 years old that doesn't know the Lord? and it's rape and it's incest, whatever it may be. How can she be a mother? Well, first off, <laughs> in the old days, years ago, there were women 13, 14 years old that were already getting married and, and getting pregnant. Sadly, they were much more mature than the 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 40 year olds in our culture today. But just, just take that young girl, say she's 14 years old and she's been raped. Horrific, horrific situation. Can't even imagine it. But can God redeem what took place? Absolutely. I can tell you that girl, if she's loved, if she's walked through the process, if she is strengthened and encouraged, if she is built up and tired, and taught how much value and worth and significance she has, I can tell you that there can be a change of heart and God Almighty can give the grace, the power, the strength, the anointing to carry that child through. Now as I end, I am not one to judge a single soul because I had my child murdered. And so I don't judge anyone that has an abortion. I also know this, that there is mercy and there's forgiveness. So here's the good news. If you've had an abortion and you feel shame, you feel guilt, you feel like God can never forgive you, I want to tell you that the forgiveness of God is for whomsoever. Whatever we go to God for forgiveness, it's available to us if we ask. So if you've had an abortion, God can forgive you. If you made someone to have an abortion, God can forgive you. There's the forgiveness of God. He can make your slate clean. He can remove the guilt. He can remove the shame. I also want to say something. If you're listening to this video and what I've shared, I'm not here to convince you. I'm just sharing my heart. If what I've shared uh, you don't agree with, you disagree with, and you say you're still pro-choice and you're going to give all the reasons, me and you will never agree on being pro-choice. But here's the story. I believe what I've shared with you, God will speak to you. And there will be a day when you will come back to your mind what has been shared with you and you will understand that abortion is murder. You will understand that if, if there's a love of the person that has the, the child, if there's a love for the child, God can bring healing, God can give strength, and there will be a place where you become pro-life. 
And if you don't, that's between you and God. Well, I've shared my heart. I, I don't have any script. I was just sharing with my heart. Uh, this was kind of a last minute thing that I wanted to do since we have Pro-Life Sunday coming. I hope I made sense. I hope you understand my heart. Uh, I, I'm passionate, passionate of doing all I can to help individuals to save the life of their child. And I don't know if this has helped or not, but I've done my part. I've done something else to try to some way encourage somebody to consider being pro-life. Thank you for listening.